A listening person. A listening person can reflect the crowd. He can do that without talking. He can do that merely by letting the talking person listen to himself. That is what Freud recommended. He had his patients lay on a couch, look at the ceiling, let their minds wander, and say whatever wandered in. That's his method of free association. That's the way the Freudian psychoanalyst avoids transferring his or her own personal biases and opinions into the internal landscape of the patient. It was for such reasons that Freud did not face his patients. He did not want their spontaneous meditations to be altered by his emotional expressions, no matter how slight. He was properly concerned that his own opinions, and worse, his own unresolved problems, would find themselves uncontrollably reflected in his responses and reactions, conscious and unconscious alike. He was afraid that he would, in such a manner, detrimentally affect the development of his patients. It was for such reasons as well that Freud insisted that psychoanalysts be analyzed themselves. He wanted those who practiced his method to uncover and eliminate some of their own worst blind spots and prejudices, so they would not practice corruptly. Freud had a point. He was, after all, a genius. You can tell that because people still hate him. But there are disadvantages to the detached and somewhat distant approach recommended by Freud. Many of those who seek therapy desire and need a closer, more personal relationship, although that also has its dangers. This is in part why I have opted in my practice for the conversation instead of the Freudian method, as have most clinical psychologists. It can be worthwhile for my clients to see my reactions. To protect them from the undue influence that might produce, I attempt to set my aim properly so that my responses emerge from the appropriate motivation. I do what I can to want the best for them, whatever that might be. I do my best to want the best, period, as well, because that is part of wanting the best for my clients. I try to clear my mind and to leave my own concerns aside. That way I am concentrating on what is best for my clients, while I am simultaneously alert to any cues that I might be misunderstanding what that best is. That's something that has to be negotiated, not assumed on my part. It's something that has to be managed very carefully to mitigate the risks of close, personal interaction. My clients talk. I listen. Sometimes I respond. Often the response is subtle. It's not even verbal. My clients and I face each other. We make eye contact. We can see each other's expressions. They can observe the effects of their words on me, and I can observe the effects of mine on them. They can respond to my responses. A client of mine might say, I hate my wife. It's out there, once said. It's hanging in the air. It has emerged from the underworld, materialized from chaos, and manifested itself. It is perceptible and concrete and no longer easily ignored. It's become real. The speaker has even startled himself. He sees the same thing reflected in my eyes. He notes that and continues on the road to sanity. Hold it, he says. Back up. That's too harsh. Sometimes I hate my wife. I hate her when she won't tell me what she wants. My mom did that all the time, too. It drove dad crazy. It drove all of us crazy, to tell you the truth. It even drove mom crazy. She was a nice person, but she was very resentful. Well, at least my wife isn't as bad as my mother. Not at all. Wait. I guess my wife is actually pretty good at telling me what she wants. But I get really bothered when she doesn't because mom tortured us all half to death being a martyr. That really affected me. Maybe I overreact now when it happens even a bit. Hey, I'm acting just like dad did when mom upset him. That isn't me. That doesn't have anything to do with my wife. I better let her know. I observed from all this that my client had failed previously to properly distinguish his wife from his mother. And I see that he was possessed unconsciously by the spirit of his father. He sees all that too. Now he is a bit more differentiated, a bit less an uncarved block, a bit less hidden in the fog. He has sewed up a small tear in the fabric of his culture. He says, That was a good session, Dr. Peterson. I nod. You can be pretty smart if you can just shut up. I'm a collaborator and opponent even when I'm not talking. I can't help it. My expressions broadcast my response even when they're subtle. So I'm communicating, as Freud so rightly stressed, even when silent. But I also talk in my clinical sessions. How do I know when to say something? First, as I said, I put myself in the proper frame of mind. I aim properly. I want things to be better. 
My mind orients itself given this goal. It tries to produce responses to the therapeutic dialogue that furthers that aim. I watch what happens internally. I reveal my responses. That's the first rule. Sometimes, for example, a client will say something and a thought will occur to me or a fantasy flit through my mind. Frequently, it's about something that was said by that same client earlier that day or during a previous session. Then I tell my client that thought or fantasy, disinterestedly. I say, you said this and I noticed that I then became aware of this. Then we discuss it. We try to determine the relevance of meaning of my reaction. Sometimes, perhaps, it's about me. That was Freud's point. But sometimes, it is just the reaction of a detached but positively inclined human being to a personally revealing statement by another human being. It's meaningful. Sometimes even corrective. Sometimes, however, it's me that gets corrected. You have to get along with other people. A therapist is one of those other people. A good therapist will tell you the truth about what he thinks. That is not the same thing as telling you what he thinks is the truth. Then at least you have the honest opinion of at least one person. That's not so easy to get. That's not nothing. That's key to the psychotherapeutic process. Two people tell each other the truth and both listen.